All right, John, we got John Wagspec here, man. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, thank you for being a part of uh, Turning Point, Joyce Gordon Gallery 20th Anniversary Exhibition. Um, and um, thank you as being one of the finalists for the uh, Bombay Sapphire Artisan Series, which we used to host. So, man, just happy to have you here and get to connect again. Ain't seen you in a minute. So, uh, yeah, just to, you know, just for starters, uh, just, um, you know, tell us a little bit about you, your background, how you got started, and um, talk about the show. Perfect. Uh, so I am originally from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it's hard to believe, but I just turned 52 years old. What? <laughs> I did, which is kind of shocking. Um, but I, I first began working with uh, the gallery probably, I'm going to guess, 12 years ago through the Bombay um, Artisan Sapphire series. Mm -hmm. And they did, uh, you know, they went to 12 cities, I believe, and they had uh, artists submit work from those 12 cities. You guys hosted um, that particular event, and then they chose a winner from each of the areas to go present at Basel. And I was fortunate through the gallery to get picked two years in a row which was really exciting. And it sort of was a launch board for me um, in meeting a lot of different, uh, making a lot of different connections, working with different galleries. And so I'm incredibly grateful that that happened and incredibly excited to celebrate the 20th anniversary with you guys. Oh yeah, it's an honor to have you. Um, this was such an exciting, because when we did our 10th anniversary, it was fun just to have 10 artists for the 10 shows. But, you know, I had to, bump it up a notch, you know, and make this more retrospective and it just like out of the 20 years, how do you pick a select group of artists uh, just to give a, a little buffet, just a little taste of various things that the gallery has done over the years and talking with Joyce and kind of reflecting back on my 11 years there, what has happened prior to me being there, what has happened like with the glimpses in time and, you know, it's just trying to finite all these things into a nice selection of uh, what the gallery has been about over the 20 years. And um, um, I reached out to, uh, and for those that don't know, Andre Gouchard, uh, he runs the gallery in Chicago, but he's also the national curator of the Bombay Sapphire Artisan Series. And uh, he did in collaboration with uh, Danny Simmons, Russell Simmons' brother. So it was an honor to connect with um Andre Gouchard and you know, um, you know, when the finalists came up, I was like, what's this John guy? His work is like, I don't know, it's like his his work is just epic. This guy just he just goes there. It's just large scale and it's just so amazing, just in you know, in terms of the aesthetic. But then when you start breaking down the content and what you know, how the how you came about creating the work that just took it to another level. And um, I was like, yeah, I got to reach out to John. I need him to represent that program for this 20th anniversary. I, I was glad you was able to respond. So um, yeah, anyway, uh, so, you know, what What was some of the, uh, do you remember what the piece was that you had in one of the shows? Uh, I do. Uh, one of the original pieces was a portrait of, um, God, what's her name? Um, I'm blanking. Hold on. There was one that was a Kate Moss, but there was also another one that was. Um, oh, I see. Uh, oh. African American artist from the uh, one of the first uh, actresses. Um, who, oh, who, that's who, right. Uh, it was, man, an, it was a bright blame. orange piece. Um, Dorothy Dandridge. Sorry. The, yeah, oh. that's right. God, I as you get older, you start to confuse all the different elements. Yeah, that and, and being busy and juggling a thousand things. <laughs> yeah, so those paintings um, were really about uh, sort of my experience crossing over from traditional fine art into how working with computers and and uh, designing digitally has affected the way we paint. Mm -hmm. and vice versa so those paintings actually looked like they were digital reproductions and yeah. i wanted I, I wanted to sort of um pay homage to painting uh 
even though they were sort of stylistically really contemporary. Mm -hmm. um, and that led to some of the work that I'm currently doing now, which is how do we bridge the gap between fine art and technology? So you've got all this new technology that's coming in, um, a lot of it having to do with printing and printing on different materials and substrates, but how does painting affect the way I design digitally and how does the way I design digitally affect painting? Mm. So the pieces that I'm uh, gonna show, um, or one in particular is a portrait of Diana Ross. Uh, the original uh, image came from a painting that I had done and then scanned it in to do a large scale reproduction. Uh, and then incorporating a tremendous amount of pop culture in it. So it it looks like collage work, um, but it sort of comes from a graphic um, painting stylized background that I, I sort of used in it. And I think it's a really contemporary spin on how we present a tremendous amount of pop information in a single piece to make it cohesive and accessible to the viewer. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that and uh, look forward to showing it. Yeah. And you were just telling me about um, it was partly inspired by the Pop Goes the Easel exhibition we did in um, right. L.A. And um, like your like your homage to like mailing a lot of the pop artists and you just kind of took it to another level. Can you tell me about tell us about what you were Sure. So, uh, you, you know, when when Pop started and I I was fortunate to uh, do a showing with him, but he one of the old school famous pop artists and a lot of his work drew from a very finite amount of pop information. So at the time in the 60s, when those guys were doing it, there was a finite uh, number of TV channels, musicians, um you know, pop culture was all Coke, Burger King, Snickers. There was just the same sort of, uh, I guess, um, information to pull from. And a lot of the work sort of, um, you can tell it's dated in a way because the stuff that's in it and the focus of it is consistent throughout a lot of those artists. When I was showing with Mel, I wanted to say, okay, you're from the CMYK universe, which is before the internet and all four colors that make up everything you print are CMYK, which is very tactile. And so a lot of, it, it speaks to craft, I think, in the in the artist of the 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, there's silk screening, painting, that's what a lot of the work was done. Mm -hmm. When, you know, I the, the internet finally came into play just after I graduated college. And suddenly with the invention of Mac and a lot of the computer stuff, um, I call it the RGB universe. And so all three, all 16 million colors online are made up of RGB, red, blue, green. And the amount of content that I can pull from if I'm doing pop art now is exponentially, it's a million times as much. So I consider everything like um, Kickstarters, uh, TikTok, D-list celebrities, um, news. Uh, there's thousands of TV channels, thousands of YouTubes. The amount of content that's being created is astronomical. And as a pop artist, I think you can pull from all of that Mm -hmm. but it can be overwhelming. So how do you present and package a ton of information in a singular piece that is cohesive and um, palatable for the person viewing it? And so that's what the series sort of moved into. Um, a lot of the pieces were printed on glass because that's how we experience all of this stuff now, um, mm -hmm. whether it's through your phone or through your computer, um, mm -hmm. that's how you see it. Um, but it allows me to do work that is hyper realistic and um, almost from a maximalistic standpoint, but not having it be overwhelming. And um, I just think it's interesting to tie, tie all of this information together to tell a larger story about the time and the person that's in the piece. Exactly, exactly. Well, I, I'm really excited about the, one of your featured pieces uh, with uh, Diana Ross. I thought that was uh, really cool how you, uh, this 
theme of the queen and you pull like all these different uh, elements of various versions of queen all into this one image of Diana Ross. And I thought, I, I was like, okay, what's that in the court? You got the queen of England, you got queen this and queen, you know, you got all these variations of queen. And I, I started looking some of them up. I was like, wow, he really, and it was like all these various channels, but it, it, it all tied into, you know, like she's a representation of these various aspects and elements of it, being a queen and queen of what she does. And, you know, she uh, is. And e e each piece uh, pays an homage to a current well known artist. And in this particular case, I chose uh, Kara Walker, who, um, She's an African American artist that's known for her silhouette work. She's incredibly famous now, and um, you'll see details of her work in in the portrait of Diana. And I think that that's pretty special. So, great, great, great! Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see it in person. So, um, anything else you want to add or? Uh... No, I'm just really looking forward to the show and looking forward to see Joyce again. Yeah, definitely. She'll be excited to see her. I told her about you. So she was like, oh, cool. Oh. So yeah, um, see you uh, next Friday, um, um, September 1st, 6 to 9 at Joyce Green Gallery for a uh, big uh, our big celebration, big 20th Perfect. anniversary. All right. Sounds thank good. you so much. Thank you, Eric. All right. Take care. All right. Bye.